Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. And here are some things that you may not know the Photos app on your Mac can do. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 900 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now the Photos app has evolved quite a bit over the years and there's a lot of deep functionality in there. In fact, people that use the Photos app every day may not know about some of these features. So let's start with a simple one. I'm often asked if there's a way to see titles or at least file names under each photo when viewing them in the All Photos view. In fact, you can. Go to View and then Metadata and you can see Titles right here. It even has a keyboard shortcut. Now when you turn that on what you'll see is either a title for a photo if one's been assigned and if no title has been assigned you'll see the file name instead. So for instance here you can see the file name. But if I click there I can actually edit the title and then you can see the title appears instead. Notice that the title is in black but file names are in gray. Now one of the coolest things that the Photos app does is it allows you to search your photos by the content of the photos. So for instance if you want to find photos that have boats in them you could just search for boat. And the Photos app is actually smart enough to recognize objects. It's not going to be perfect but it will help you narrow things down. So for instance if you took a bunch of pictures at some docks you would be able to search for boat and then you can control click on it and choose Show in All Photos to jump to that photo and the ones around it. Another thing you could do is you could view metadata such as which camera was used to actually take the photo. So for instance some of my earliest photos here if I select and then do Command I or click the Information button here you can see in the Info window it tells me this was taken with the C3030Z. I haven't had that camera for a long time. If I select Other Photos you can see this one was taken with the iPhone 7 Plus. And if I scroll down I could see that this one was taken with my iPhone 10 and this one here was taken with my Rebel. Now when you take a picture with your iPhone it's going to take the GPS data and automatically assign a location to a photo. But most regular cameras don't have GPS. So if you look at the photo here, get info about it, you'll see under Location there's nothing. It won't show up on a map. But you can easily add a location. You don't even have to use a map to do it. You can just click here and type a location. It will even auto complete and you can select it. And then if you want you can actually use this map and drag it around. Pick up the pin and move that to any specific spot. Now there's a great set of editing tools in the Photos app. So you can double click on a photo to view it larger, click Edit and you have all sorts of different ways to adjust, filter, and crop photos. And in addition to that there's a button here that you can click and access extra editing tools included by third party apps that you may have added to your Mac. But you could also before you go into editing choose Image and then Edit With and edit a photo in an external editor. So I'm going to use Pixelmator Pro. It will open up the image in Pixelmator Pro. And I can make changes here. For instance let me do a color adjustment and add a filter like that. Then I can save. And once it's saved I can close and you can see it's saved here. In Photos editing is non-destructive so I can always go into Edit and then revert to Original if I want. Now I showed you how if you edit there's additional tools in here. One that you'll always see even if you have nothing extra installed is Markup. And you can use the Markup tools, the same ones that you find in Preview and Mail and other places to do things like actually write text and draw shapes. Just do all sorts of different markup in here. Save changes and you can see that's now on the photo. So you can add captions, information, arrows, all sorts of things. You can always revert to original there as well. You can also hide photos by selecting them and then you can go to Image and Hide Photo. Or you can select multiple ones and it would show Hide Multiple Photos there. You can use Command L for that. Now when you hide a photo it's going to hide it and put it in a special album that you can't usually see. But if you go to View there's Show Hidden Photo Album and then you can click here to see which photos you've hidden. You could select those and easily unhide them using the same Command L shortcut. And hidden photos won't show up in searches and memories and all sorts of places like that. Now even if you know that you can adjust photos in the Photos app you may not know that you can fix imperfections as well. So you can go into a photo like this one, Edit, and then use the Retouch tool here. 
You can adjust the size of the retouch tool which is the size of the circle. We can zoom in here. Basically click and it will try to fix the imperfections there. The smaller the circle the more accurate you can get. Now you can filter, adjust the colors, and do other things with photos. But what about videos? Apple actually added the ability to do all that with videos as well and they did it quietly pretty recently. So let's go to look at the videos here. Let's look at this video and if I edit you can see I've got some of the same tools here adjusting light and color so I can you know, increase the shadows in this, decrease the highlights, change the brightness, and do other things like run it through a filter, even crop. And when I click Done now the entire video has been edited every frame. And just like with pictures you can revert to original. Another special type of photo that you've got is live photos. And you may take a lot of live photos if you have that turned on by default on your iPhone. And live photos include a bit of video. They're actually taking many frames of photos and storing them in the same file. So you've got a photo like this which shows live here and you can see I can move my cursor over it and you can see the little bit of video there. If I go to Edit I've got tools in here to be able to edit the live photo. Most notably down here I've got four ways for the live photo to be shown. One it just shows the bit of video. Another one it loops. Another one it bounces back and forth. And the most interesting one in a photo like this is long exposure where it uses all the different frames to create a long exposure for this image. Now it works great for this. It's actually not just overlaying each frame but it's adjusting it so if you're moving the camera a little bit you don't have it on a tripod it's still going to overlay parts of the photo like the rocks here perfectly and then it's going to be able to make a long exposure of the water here. Now if you like animated GIFs then you may think that live photos have a lot in common with those. And in fact you could export an animated GIF from photos. You have to set the live photo to loop. And once you've set it to loop which works great in a photo like this then you can go to File, Export, and Export GIF will show up. If this is grayed out that means either you're not looking at a live photo or if you are looking at a live photo you haven't set it to loop. Another type of photo you may have is a portrait photo taken with the iPhone. So this has a foreground and a background. So when you go into a portrait photo you can go to Edit It and under Adjust at the top you should see Portrait. You may have to expand this and you can set the depth so you can make the background be sharper or blurrier depending upon where you set this. And also you have the general controls here for what type of portrait it is. Now if you want to send a bunch of photos for somebody to review you could export a whole bunch of photos and send them this folder full of photos. But you could also create a context sheet as a PDF. The way to do that is select a whole bunch of photos like this and then go pretend you're printing them. Now when you go to Print instead of choosing something like Fit or Fill as you would normally do to print a nice photo go to the bottom here and choose Contact Sheet. And then you could adjust the number of columns, the margin, even click Captions here and change what's included with each photo. And then you could Click Print and now instead of actually printing these out you can save as a PDF like this and the PDF file could then easily be sent to somebody. They could even then mark it up and send you comments back. Now with the Photos app you can have multiple photo libraries. You don't just have to have one. If you go to Photos Preferences under General you'll see your library location here and you can even click Show in Finder to see where it is. If you want to switch to another library you have to quit Photos that hold the Option key down when you launch Photos. And then you get this special window here that allows you to choose a new library. It's going to look all over your internal drive and any other drives that are attached to find all of your Photos libraries. And you can select any one to open it. You can also click Create New to create a new Photos library. Now you should be careful when using multiple Photos libraries. You should have a good reason to use a second one. You could only have one as your iCloud Photos library. So most people are just going to want to have one and use that for everything. But let's say you're an amateur photographer and somebody asks you to photograph a special event. Well you may not want to mix those photos with your photos. So this would be a good opportunity to create a separate library. Put all those photos there. Then you could go and do everything you do in Photos. Adjust them. Add titles. Create PDFs. Do whatever you want. And keep those photos separate from your regular Photos library. 
Other people may want to have a second photos library for photos that have to do with work. Like if you work in real estate or marketing and you want to keep those work photos separate from your regular iCloud Photos library. I often hear that a problem with using the Photos app is that all of your photos have to be sucked into this Photos library. You can't have them as separate files. And that's just not true. You can go into Photos Preferences under General. There's a checkbox here for Copy Items to the Photos Library. If you have that off you can drag and drop a file into the Photos app. It will add it to your library and appear that it's there but the photo will remain attached to that external file that's saved wherever you want. So you can have a mixture of photos that are in your library and photos that are external files to your library. Now note when you turn this off you get this warning that these external photos won't be part of iCloud. So you won't see them on your iPhone or iPad or your second Mac. And if you do use this and then decide you want those photos to be internal to the library you can actually select the photo and then go to File, Consolidate. And what that does is it will copy the photo into your library after the fact. The external file will still remain there but that's its own thing. The photo you see in your Photos app in your library that's now inside the library. So there's a look at some of the features of the Mac Photos app in Mac OS Big Sur that you may not know about. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.